Hello, my name is Pablo Riquena and in this video I'm going to show how to fit or how to make the bone saddle for a classical guitar. So what I've done so far is I've got a plank of um, bone which is 2.5 millimeters thick and it's the same thickness as the slot in the bridge and usually when you buy these pieces of bone they never really fit 100% so they're always a little bit thicker than you need to and then all you need to do is to sand them down carefully so that you get a good fit but now that it fits into the slot what we are going to do is to work out the height that the, the bone needs to be um, and the shape so that when we fit the strings on we've got a good setup. So like I said we're starting from the point in which the saddle fits into the slot very comfortably. I can see that you can see that I can slide it comfortably but there's no you know it moves a little bit but you don't want rattly movement backwards and forwards so it needs to be a good fit. So I'm gonna bring it flush to one end that side there and then I'm going to use I'm going to use a sharp pencil like this one and I'm going to make one line in the front just here so that you can see I've just done one line here so that I know how much it's um, hanging out over there and then I'm also going to make one very small line to mark the length like that now, this is the important thing, it's to be able to decide how much bone we are going to be removing from here because if we were to shape the bone just like that and lift it at that height then it's quite obvious that the strings here are going to be far too high and obviously it's not going to work. So we need to find out how much to remove from the bone so that we have the action that we want to have uh, and on the 12th fret. So that's what we are going to do now. And to do that, all we need is to have one millimeter, uh, one millimeter veneer. I've got one millimeter veneer that I'm going to put right on the edge where the nut would go. I don't want to use the nut because what I'm going to be doing is to put a straight edge resting on top of the veneer and on top of the saddle. You have to do this really careful because the guitar is completely polished and it's very easy to scratch it. So you have to be really, really careful when, when you're doing this job. So now that I've got that, what I'm going to do is to take a reading of the gap in between the top of the 12th fret and the bottom of the straight edge. So I'm just gonna look here. I don't expect that you'll be able to see in the camera what it is, but I am reading it's just over five millimeters. I'm gonna just guess that it's 5.2. So I'm gonna make a note here. Treble it's 5.2. And then I'm gonna do the same for the base. So if I bring this over to this edge, I bring this over there, and then again on the 12th fret, I'm going to rest the ruler on top of the fret, and here I have just under 6 millimeters. So I'm going to call that 5.9. So I'm going to write this down before I forget. 5.9 I just want to check again uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this straight edge and um, now I'm going to remove the saddle 
and I'm going to put the guitar away because it's very fragile. I should say the polish is very fragile, so basically I want to make sure that I don't have the guitar hanging around here on the bench while I'm doing all this work. Right, so basically I've got these two figures here, so I don't know you can come a bit closer so that we can see what we're going to be writing down here. So at the moment the current action of the guitar on the treble is 5.2 and we want to get down to 3 millimeters. And then on the bass, currently is 5.9 and we want to get down to 4 millimeters. So what we're going to do is to subtract this amount. Okay, so this is going to be 2.2 millimeters and this is going to be 1.2 nine millimeters okay but if I just go and remove 2.2 millimeters and 1.9 millimeters from the saddle the action is still gonna be too high and I'll explain why so I'm gonna do a diagram here maybe I'll do at the back of this page so I'm going to use this ruler and I'm going to make one line starting at this point and then we've got 14 centimeters that's going to be our 12th fret and then we have 28 that is the position of the saddle and this is the nut position okay so the 12th fret it's in the middle of the scale length so if I took a measurement here and it was let's say what was this one three point something what was it? Um, yeah five let's say that it's, we're gonna work with round number so let's say that we have three millimeters here okay so over here you can see that this distance is double this distance so this is six because this is double the distance from the cent from the initial point. So what that means is that if I want to go down here by one millimeter, in here I need to go down two millimeters. Okay. So the same thing with our numbers. If I want to go down by two point two millimeters at this point, then over here I need to bring this down four point four, so that by the time I got two millimeters down here, the projection of that will be 4.4. I hope this is clear enough. It's, this is really just a mathematical problem. <clears throat> but basically the reality is that now we need to multiply this by 2 and multiply this by 2. And then basically we have 4.4 and <clears throat> 3.8 millimeters. Um, on the treble and on the bass. Okay, so now that we have those dimensions, I'm gonna get back to my pencil and I'm gonna get a ruler. And I wanted to have this line here because this is the area that it's inside the bridge. So I find it helpful because it helps me to remember where I'm going to be doing the marking. So from the position where the first string would be, which is more or less about 10 millimeters from the edge, I'm going to make a mark 4.4 millimeters down. So again, this is all going to be an approximation because obviously it's only so accurate you can be with a ruler. 
4.4 and then on the base again if that was the line that I mark for the end of the of the bridge then I need to bring this in about 10 millimeters from this line there so I'm going to mark here 3.8 so 3.8 it's going to be there just before 4 millimeters here okay and then all I need to do is to join these two points and that tells me that I'm going to have a very slight slope on the saddle. You can see the base is very slightly here. It's very slightly higher here than here on the base than on the treble. Now I like cutting this at this stage so I don't cut this uh, this length first because then the off cut that I have from the bone I can use it for the reinforcements for the tail block in the bridge. So what we're going to do is to cut this up So I'm gonna cut, I'm going to cut it quite close to the line, but making sure that I don't touch the line. mark the line for the length which is this one here So first I'm just going to clean the end edge and I'm just going to use this sand that I put here, just like that. If you don't have one of these, all you need to do is to use a block with some paper and you can just hold it somewhere and you can just do it by hand. Right, so now this is the the um, the bone for the saddle, but it's very rough at the top, obviously, because that's the area that we've been just cutting. But not only that, we also have to shape it in a certain way. So the first job to do here is to clean the top part of the saddle. So I'm going to put it on the base, like that. 
and then I'm going to use pencil and I'm going to mark this side completely with pencil and what will happen is that as I'm cleaning this face I'm going to use a flat block with sandpaper stuck to it now I'm going to try to guess my horizontal line and you know I think for me it's about here even though it might not look 90 degrees in, in the camera but it is pretty good so all I need to do is hold my arm against my body so that so that when I got have the angle I can keep working and then move it so that I can have a look at what I'm doing and then bring it back and it will find the right angle again if I'm working with my hand out like that we will end up being all over the place and it won't be very accurate so always find a good accurate way of working so what I'm going to do <coughs> is to clean the top and I can see that as I'm working on it, the pencil is disappearing and I've got left the lower spots. So I just need to keep going until everything is absolutely clean. So that's what I'm going to do. But you have to be careful not to overdo it either. So just gently to make sure that you just remove only the necessary. a bit here and a little bit there okay so I can see that I'm not quite on the line that I marked and that's on purpose because at the moment as it is the top of the saddle it's very straight so if I put a ruler over here I can see that it follows the edge of the ruler it's very straight but that's not what I want to have. I want to have a very, very slight compass so that the center section is very, very slightly higher than the ends. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put it back on the vise and then again find my 90 degrees here and then I'm just going to go from the center to that edge and from the center to this edge. Now the reason why I want to have an arched saddle is because the way that I do the fingerboard is not absolutely 100% flat and I don't know if you've seen a previous, video, a previous video where I explain how to plane the fingerboard so that you get the right setup. I don't know if you remember that I plane one side of the fingerboard to one height and then once I had the height I removed some from the base area. So it means that at some point the fingerboard was flat, but then once I finish uh, playing in the base area, the fingerboard was sloping down. So at the lower area of the fingerboard, there's always going to be a very, very slight arch. So let's have a look on the guitar. I got her back in here. So basically what that means is that on this area there is a very very slight arch again you're not going to be able to see that on the video but like I was saying as first I planed this side completely flat to 3.5 over the whole distance but then once that's, that was achieved I removed some of the treble area sorry the base area so what that means is that there is a very slight arch here and that's why if I just go for a flat saddle with the right height in both ends, it will end up being a little too low in the middle and the strings in the middle could bust. So that's the reason why we want an arched saddle. So back to the saddle, I'm going to have a look and see how much how much um, arch I've managed to go. Yes, that's exactly what I want. So basically, actually it's a little high here, so I'm just gonna put a little mark there. Okay, 
yes, that's what I want. Okay, so now what we have here is a very flat top of the saddle. And again, that is not going to work at all. So I'm going to do a, a simple diagram so that you can see what I'm doing here. So at the moment, the strings, I mean, sorry, the, the saddle is completely flat on the top, even though it's the right height. But what will happen is that if we left it like that and the strings were sitting on the top, and then the string is going down to be tied up, you can see that actually the turning point of the string is at the back of the saddle. And the problem with that is that as the string vibrates and it goes up and down doing um, uh, wave shapes, it will lift into this area and then as, as it comes back down again, it will slap into the front of the saddle and it will create again a buzzing noise which is quite annoying so that will not give you a clean note so what we need to do is to have a very thin edge on the top and a slope at the back of the saddle so that that way when the strings are fitted They are dressed in at the very front of the saddle. Okay, that way the string will produce a very clean sound. Right, so that's what we're going to do. So again, to do that, I don't want to lose the height, so I'm going to put pencil again on the top of the saddle, like so. I'm going to bring the saddle up as much as I can, it's fairly low, so I just want to get it out as much as possible, like that, and then I'm going to get a stick with some paper into it, and then I'm going to get this auto hangle. Now, in here I've got it worked out because I've already got the bias um, cut down to give me the right angle, but I'm just going to work out the angle for you um, with this so if I put this in here like that this is the angle that I get which is ten fourteen degrees. Okay, so we've got a fourteen degree angle here. So I'm gonna write it down there, fourteen degrees. Okay? So now all I need to do is to clean the back of the saddle and I'm going to leave a very very thin black line in the front that means that I'm not losing any of the height if I remove the black line, then it means that I'm losing the top profile that I have already established. The sound is a little horrible, but sorry. Whoops, let me see if I can avoid it. No, I can. Sorry.
Okay, so now we have the right shape there. <clears throat> now what I want to do is that because I have a very sharp edge in here and that could break the winding on the strings and again it won't work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of uh, 400 some paper and I'm just going to just soften up the edges so that it's not unfriendly to the string. Yes, I can feel that it's not so edgy anymore, but I still want to do a bit more and round it up a little bit to lose the sharp edges. Okay, now the next job is to remove a little bit of these corners and because I have the line I have this line here, which is where the top of the draws within the bone goes. I know that the arch that I make mustn't go past that point, otherwise the corner of the bridge will show up. So again, I'm just going to do that with a block. And again, it doesn't have to be a big curve, it's just to round up. that edge a little bit and then this one here that one you might see better if I do it in here so I don't want to switch it on because this machine is quite hungry and it will eat the bone in no time so if I just do a little bit by hand without switching it off on it will work better so there's the shape and I'm just going to remove a little bit at the back with this, like that. And then the final job is to get a piece of super fine sandpaper, this one is 1800 grit, and just give it a good clean to smooth it up and make it as clean as possible. Now, some people would cut the saddle to have um, particular slots for different strings to compensate so that they get the right intonation. I don't usually do that because I feel that in my guitar it doesn't need it, the intonation is always really good. And anyway, each guitar is individual, so that's a different job altogether. So it's not something that we're going to be discussing in this video. But I just mentioned it, just in case you think, oh, you're not cutting any any slots for compensation. So that's why, because I don't need to do it on my guitars. So I just want to get a very nice and smooth piece of bone, so I could spend another 10 minutes here, but I'm not going to do that in front of the camera, I'll do that later. So I'm going to bring the guitar back out in here and just going to get a few things out of the way to make sure that I'm not going to scratch it with anything. So basically I have my saddle and of course the slope needs to go in that way so that the lower part goes towards the holes and it fits into my slot really nicely. So the saddle is now ready but what will happen is that um, in a minute, you know, outside the video, I'm not going to do that on, on the video, I'm going to put the strings on on the guitar. And when I have the guitar with 
the tension that the strings need to be up to pitch, then I will take a final reading of the action. Because what will happen is that the chances are with the tension is that with the tension of the strings, the 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 neck will pull forward a little bit, which is something that I was accounting for, and it will give a very very slight relief to the strings, which is also important for the for the setup. But what it means is that it's not really possible to work out how much pull the neck is going to do until you put the strings on. So when I have the strings on, then I will look at the action again, and it needs to be four millimeters at the base and three millimeters at the treble. If you were building a flamenco guitar, you could do everything absolutely the same, but the action would be three millimeters at the base and 2.5 millimeters at the treble. So obviously the saddle, it's going to be just a little bit lower. But basically what, what, it, what it is is that if I put the strings on and the action is still a little high, all I need to do is to uh, slack the strings off again, get the saddle out, and then from the base of the saddle you can remove a little bit of material from the treble side, from the base side, or from the whole thing to adjust it to whatever you need. And then when you put the saddle back in place, and you put the strings back up to tension, then you will have the right action. Now, um, I realize this job is a little complicated, and I'm sure that there are many other things that I haven't been able to explain, because each guitar is different, and which means that each situation is slightly different. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to explain on an email or, or answer it to the comments the best I can. Ideally, this is the kind of thing that you really learn when you do one of my courses because then we got the time to explore the different options and to really understand how this process works. I know it's confusing in terms of working out the numbers. I try to explain the best, but again, I'm not a mathematician, so I'm good with my hands, not so better with numbers, not so good with numbers. So again, you know, when, when we do that, this together in the courses, this is when there's a really good chance to explain this process really well. So I hope you found this helpful in any case, and until the next video.